Thank you for joining our JCU webinar series. My name is Cameron Murphy. I'm part of the Future Students team here at JCU, and tonight I'll be your MC. I acknowledge the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first inhabitants of this country and pay my respects to the traditional owners and elders past and present of the land on which we stand. In the spirit of reconciliation, I also acknowledge the valuable contribution that Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples continue to make to James Cook University and the broader community. Now some housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during tonight's presentation, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel, and I'll address these with the speakers as they arise. Tonight, we have Lara Bellino, a senior team leader in customer service at QTech. QTech is the Queensland Tertiary Admission Centre that provides an application service for universities in Queensland and Northern New South Wales. It assesses both undergraduate and postgraduate student admissions for JCU against our entry requirements and makes offers to successful applicants. Tonight, Lara will be discussing how you apply through QTech, how QTech calculates your ATAR, special admission schemes, as well as any important dates and deadlines. I'd now like to welcome Lara. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Lara Bellino and I am a team leader in the QTAC Customer Information Services team. So if any of you are emailing or calling through, you do come directly through to my team. Tonight, I will be discussing with you how to apply through QTAC this year and beyond. So with that in mind, let's get started. So who is QTAC? QTAC is a non-for-profit organisation. So we're actually not owned by a government. We are technically a non-for-profit. You can apply through QTAC for over 1,800 courses at 17 different Queensland institutions. We also calculate and release the Queensland Year 12 ATAR, and we also do so much more. If anyone's looking to study interstate, it is a direct application to that TAC. So that tertiary admission centre. As you can see, we've got New South Wales and ACT, known as UAC. We also have VTAC for Victoria, New South, New South Wales and South Australia um, as well. So Northern Territory, SATAC, TISC and UTAS. So if you are wanting to go to any of these state universities, you do have to apply directly to that state. What that does mean, it is a separate application and we are completely different companies. So applying to another state doesn't actually interfere with your QTEC application and vice versa. It is completely separate. So admissions criteria 101. So the institutions do determine their own rules for admissions and then QTEC will implement them. For most institutions, the rules are applied consistently within that institution, but the rules can change from institution to institution. It's quite common that if you're applying for the same course for multiple institutions, you can meet the requirement for one and then not the other. We're now going to meet Harry. So Harry's a current Year 12 student on track to receive a Queensland ATAR. His favourite subjects are biology and physics, and he has his sights set on going to a university at JCU, and his dream career is in nursing. So Harry wants to start by trying to find a course that he can go to. The first thing he's going to do is head to the QTAC website and go to our course search. So Harry wants to keep his options open. So that's why when he did search for a course, he just typed in nursing and then hit search. From there, Harry can narrow the, down the course search by the course level, so diploma, masters and bachelor, the duration of the course, so part-time versus full-time and the institution. As you can see on the screen, it has returned a lot of different courses, all that relate to nursing. Once Harry's found a course that he would like to explore more, he simply has to click on that course. From there, he'll be able to see an overview of the course and the admissions criteria. Now, the admissions criteria is the most important part of this course search. This will tell you all the information that you need to know to get into a particular course. It will tell you your admissions criteria as well as your prerequisites. 
as well as any other starting dates, as well as when the offer round is. On the right hand side, you'll also be able to see a QTAC course code. This is a really super helpful tip. When you are applying through QTAC, it's a lot easier to apply using the QTAC course code than actually searching for the course again. Preferences. We're now going to tell you how you should be listing your preferences and some really good options that are available to you. So what is preferencing? So preferencing is an important part of the application process as only one offer is received at a time and is based on your highest eligible preference. You can also list up to six preferences on your application. If you change your mind, that's completely fine. You can change your preferences three times free of charge. You can even change your preferences after the application is lodged and even after an offer is made. However, for year 12 students, we always think it's a good idea just to keep one up your sleeve for after your ATAR has been released in case this changes your mind on where you wanna go. You can change your preferences more than three times, um, just keeping in mind that it is an additional fee each time you make that change of preference. So when you are changing your preferences, there's so much that you can actually do within that one preference change. You can take all your preferences out, you can add more in, you can move them up and down. It's not until you go save and continue that that will count as one full change of preference. So ordering your preferences. So QTAC always advise that one and two, these should be your most desired courses. So the courses that you wanna get into the most. Three and four, these are your backup courses. The courses you would be happy to study if you couldn't get straight into one and two. And then we have five and six. These are your pathway courses. These are the courses that will help you upgrade in the course that you really, really wanna get into. So we know Harry really wants to get into that nursing um, field. So this is a really good example of how Harry could list his preferences when choosing to go to JCU. So we can see here that one and two, these are the courses he really wants to get into. Three and four, these are the backup courses, the courses he wouldn't mind doing if he can't get straight into one and two. And then we have five and six. Now, these are the pathway courses. If Harry can't get straight into any of the courses he really wants to get into, these are a really good option of how he could upgrade and then get into his dream course. Now, it's always super important that you have something like Harry's fifth preference here. It's less competitive to get into, generally speaking, um, than actual Bachelor of Nursing and Midwifery. And studying there for a year full-time can heavily increase um, Harry's application rank and make him really, really competitive. So it's a really good option to make sure you have something in there that you know that you'll well and truly meet the entry requirements for. So what are some pathway course options? So you can go to less competitive degrees, like we saw with Harry's pathway courses, different campuses, bridging and tertiary preparation courses as well. You'll sometimes see combined diplomas slash degrees. So that is like a um, diploma of something and then a bachelor of something slash. Um, this is a really great way to upgrade into the course that you really wanna get into. For most diplomas at a lot of you know campuses, you can actually get nearly up to a full year's credit. So you haven't actually lost any time. And on successful completion of that diploma, you can go straight into the bachelor. So it's a really good option to, you know, don't rule that out and have it as a great pathway, um, you know, and you qualify with two different qualifications as well. And university might not be for everyone. So it's really important to, you know, not be closed off minded. And if you want to go to TAFE employment and trade qualifications, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Everyone is going to have their own unique and individual journey. Um, and that's the great thing about, you know, university is you can always go there if you want to at a later stage of life. And don't forget that QTAC is here to help. We want to help students, you know, match them with an opportunity that is perfect for them. So eligibility and merit, this is the unbreakable pair and how you will be selected for a course. So eligibility requirements. So some eligibility requirements are age requirements, subject prerequisites, portfolios, auditions or interviews, essays or personal statements, 
questionnaires or exams. You might have to do a separate application as well to universities for some medicine and dentistry courses. And it's really important to remember that a lot of these requirements will likely have to be submitted by an earlier deadline. So while you are researching your courses, it's really important that you make a note, a note of any cl early closing dates. So you can generally see this on the course search under admissions criteria, as well as there is also a designated section on our website called fixed closing dates. Any um, course that has an earlier closing date or a specific requirement that is due earlier, it will be listed here. So how is merit determined? So your merit is determined by your selection rank. So applicants are allocated a rank based on their accessible qualifications. So some ranks can come from ATARTS, overseas year 12 qualifications. So we don't just look after year 12 students. We look after mature age students as well who are coming through to tertiary study and they might have completely different walks of life. So having these qualification sets helps us rank them against other qualifications as well. We also have completed um, AQF qualifications, so a CERT three and four, diplomas, advanced diplomas, tertiary study. So that's a bachelor's degree, um, generally in a minimum of at least two subjects. This can also be allocated a separate application rank. We also have music, dance and drama qualifications and bridging and prep courses. So breaking it down for you, this is how you will be selected for a course. So the first thing we have to check is something like eligibility. So a minimum entry requirements, have they been met? This is generally something like a subject prerequisite. If the answer is yes, we then begin to check your merit. Now this could be your ATAR or a qualification as well. So the way the system works is you have to meet eligibility first. Once you've done that, then you can check your merit. And if your merit is above that minimum to um, be considered for a place, you'll then go into a pool with all other eligible students to then compete for a place. Now, by now, a lot of you might have started to notice that there are minimum ATAR and ranks on our website and for the year 12 students, your year 12 guide. It's super important to remember that this is a guide and a guide only. This is what happened last admissions year. That's not a guarantee of what will happen this year, but use it as a guide to you know, select your courses. Awesome, so once you've met those two, then you can go into the offer round. So, you know, you might have an ATAR of 99.95, but if you haven't met a subject requirement, you can't actually be considered for a place. So you have to meet every single requirement before you can be considered. If no, the process will repeat, but for your next preference. So the system will just keep working its way down until it can release an offer to you. So this is an example of how the offer rounds can work. We can see where Harry's minimum ATAR is, and then we can see the entry requirements and the course cutoff ATARs. I wanna really highlight here, this is definitely an example, and these ATARs are no indication of what's gonna happen this year or even last year. They are just randomly selected. So for one and two, unfortunately, Harry's ATAR is just not high enough. So we can't be considered for this course. Now for his third preference, although Harry has met that minimum ATAR requirement, he hasn't met the entry requirements, the eligibility requirements. So this could be something like a subject. Um, so that way the offer cannot be released there. Harry would be released to an offer for his fourth preference. So it's really important to remember um, that this is something to keep an eye on um, in your preferences. It's quite often that you will see them all say satisfied that just means that you've met the minimum entry requirements to be considered for a place. It is an, an indication that you will definitely receive an offer. So congratulations, you've received an offer. What are you gonna do now? So there are a couple options available to you. So if you're happy with your course, you wanna enroll and you don't wanna be considered for anything else, you outright accept your offer. 
if you no longer wish to study this course and you actually don't want to be considered for anything else, you outright reject. If you're happy with your offer, but you're not quite ready to en enroll, maybe you want to have you know, a year off, you outright defer. It's really important to remember that when you accept, reject or defer, it's an outright response. And what I mean by that is that your application won't be considered for anything else. If you did want to be considered for something else, you have to conditionally respond. Now, I also want to highlight that ignoring your offer and letting it um, lapse, which you can see in the system has happened, is counted as a rejection. So it's still an outright offer. So if you ever want to be considered for something else, you still have to respond to your offer, but do it conditionally. So conditionally responding, this can stump a lot of people and this is also a really super important part of your application. If you change your mind and you've received an offer, it's okay, you can re conditionally respond. But as I highlighted before, you can only have one offer in the system at a time. So if you are going to conditionally respond, you've conditionally accepted that offer on the condition that you would like to be considered for something else. So because you can only have one offer in the system, if you were to receive an offer elsewhere, you would lose that offer. So when you're conditionally responding, you will only be considered for preferences that are placed above where you've been offered. So in this situation here, Harry's received an offer for his first preference. What Harry would have to do is accept that offer and then rearrange his preferences to put anything that Harry wants to be considered for placed above. So if Harry now wants to be considered, you know, um, for Townsville, he just wants to do the singular Bachelor of Nursing Science, that's fine. He accepts his first preference and then he swaps those two around. So the dual is now number two and the um, Bachelor of Nursing Science at Townsville is now number one that will automatically conditionally accept his preference. Now, it's super important that you will get considered for every single preference placed above where you've been made an offer. So what Harry doesn't want to do is drop his first preference all the way down to the bottom, because that means that he would be actually considered for every single preference placed above. So you received an offer, but it's not your first choice. That's perfectly fine. You received your offer for your third preference, but you still wanna be considered for the ones above. Um, you can just simply offer and make it conditional. And that way we can see here that Harry won't be considered for the ones below, but he will be considered for the ones above. Now, I definitely don't mean to try, try and like sway you away from conditionally accepting. QTAC definitely encourages students to do that. We just have two rules. One is that because you really, really wanna receive an offer elsewhere, don't do it to see how many courses that you can receive an offer for because you can jeopardize your offer. And two, make sure that you've done it correctly. If you get stuck, do give QTAC a call. Now, in some cases, we can reactivate a previous offer. Like, so, so maybe you've conditionally accepted, you received something else, but now you want your first preference that you received. You can give QTAC a call and we can see if we can potentially reactivate this offer for you. But it is super important to remember that we can't always do that. And you know, that can always change at any stage. So just please um, make me two promises that you're only gonna do it because you really want to receive an offer elsewhere and then you do it correctly. So adjustment schemes. So selection ranks and adjustment factors. So for those of you who are receiving an ATAR this year in the audience, um, your ATAR is calculated only on your actual QC subject results which have been scaled. So the ATAR that you will receive at the end of this year is a raw ATAR and a raw ATAR only. Adjustment factors like EAS or subject adjustments are applied after your ATAR is calculated. So it's your ATAR plus adjustments. This is going to equal your application selection rank. Now you won't be able to view, like visually view this number. However, you can call QTAC and we can verbally tell you 
what your application selection rank is. So your ATAR with any adjustments. So educational access scheme or known as EAS. So this helps if your studies have been negatively affected by circumstances beyond your control. It applies adjustment points to your rank to help you complete more competitively for an offer. And you just apply for EAS through your QTAC application. When you're filling it out online, there's like a little toggle, you just need to tick it over. And that's an indication that you would like to apply for the scheme. Now, when you are applying, you don't have to upload any documentation straight away. After you've lodged your application, we will send you an email with all the documentation instructions that you need to follow. So it's really important to remember that EAS is evidence-based. So every EAS claim that you make will have a cover sheet as well as all supporting documents. Now, different institutions do award different adjustments. So it's quite common that you can have different application ranks with every single course and institution, and it can be quite different. Some of them cap them and some of them don't. So the ES categories that you can apply to is home environment and responsibilities, financial hardship, English language difficulties, school environment, and personal illness or disability. So depending on whether you are a current year 12 student or not, some of these categories might actually require that your schools also assist you with filling these out. They might need to verify the situation. Now, if you've applied for EAS and you know you change your mind and you no longer you know, want to be considered for EAS, it's perfectly fine. Just make sure you are contacting QTAC. In some rare cases, it can actually stop you from receiving an offer. So if you decide not to submit this document, just let us know as soon as possible, just so we can fix it up for you. And likewise, if you do apply through QTAC and then you remember, oh my gosh, I was meant to apply for EAS, don't panic, don't stress, give us a call. We can really easily add this in for you. And just another thing with EAS is designed to help a student not negatively affect their application. So don't feel like you won't receive an offer because you've applied for this category um, or because like you weren't awarded it. It's not how the system works. And even me as a team leader, I can't even see your EAS documents. There's about four people in the entire company, you can actually see them. So it is heavily guarded by security and privacy. So we definitely encourage students to apply if you feel that you are eligible. So there are a lot of other adjustment schemes. So each institution does have their own adjustments that are applied at the time of application. So a lot of these will be automatically added onto your application either after you've been assessed or your ATAR has been released. So some of these are regional schools, school relationships. So at JCU, if you are like, you know, a local school, you could be eligible to receive some adjustments. Subject schemes. So it's important to remember that you have to pass the subjects to be able to receive these adjustments. So that's the C grade. Elite athletes, introductory study. So that's like your Head Start programs equity and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. So if you are wanting to apply for elite athlete, you do have to list this in your application um, when you are applying similar to EAS. You don't have to upload anything straight away, but we will send you an email advising if there's anything that you need to provide to QTAC. And then same again for any of those introductory studies, you just have to list it under the qualifications. If you don't tell us about a certain qualification, we won't know about it. So make sure that you definitely fill it out. And then most other adjustments like your school relationships or like subject schemes or you know being a local resident, these are automatically added onto your application after you've been verified and assessed. Now, some of you might receive a form that's known as a rural access scheme. Now, this is sent depending on you know, if you apply for an eligible course. So this is the only form that QTAC will ever tell you to ignore. So if you're not from a rural area, you can just ignore this form. 
Okay, so for those of you who are year 12 students in the audience, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how you're going to be able to receive your ATAR this December. So QCE and ATAR, what is the difference? So the QCE certifies learning, showing the individual has achieved a specific standard of education at schooling level, and it may be considered by employers or the general community. As the ATAR tells us about a student's position or ranking compared to all other students in the state. Now, the only intended purpose for the ATAR is to assist with selecting applicants for tertiary study. So if you have any questions regarding your subject results or um, you know, your assessment or the curriculum, these need to go directly to the QCAA. Anything to do with your ATAR, how it's calculated, how you receive it, that comes straight to QTAC. So how to assess your ATAR. So current year 12 students, you'll be able to um, open your ATAR account next Tuesday. So the 1st of August, you'll be able to go in and register for it. Don't do it before then, because we won't be able to create a match just yet. So students, if you're wishing to study interstate, you also need to create an ATAR account because this will give us the authority and consent to send your ATAR to those um, interstate universities. And ATARs will be released in December. There hasn't been a date selected just yet, but continue to monitor our website for the most update information. And if you wish to apply to commence tertiary study in 2024, you will also need to complete a QTAC application. So like I touched on before, not everyone applying through QTAC is a year 12 student. So that's why creating one won't automatically give you another. So with QTAC as a year 12 student only, I'm qualifying for an ATAR, you will need to have two accounts with us. One is to receive your ATAR, and then one is to lodge your application to universities through QTAC. So setting up your account. So once the registration is complete, the dashboard will show the students relevant personal information. So when you are setting up your account, make sure that you are using your um, official details. So if your name's Nicholas um, and you're filling out your first name, don't type in Nick, because um, it won't be able to create a match. So once you've been able to successfully link your details to the QTAC system, where it says your data, it will say exit year, and that will say 2023, and then also confirmed and then pending release. This is exactly what you wanna see because this means that you have been able to successfully link your details to our system and the QTAAs as well. If you have entered it incorrectly, the system will continue to let you re-enter it in multiple times until you've been able to create that match. So ATAR release. So the ATARs are only released online. Gone are the days when they are SMS to you, emailed to you in the newspaper, you know, sent out in the post. It's not a thing anymore. To be able to receive your ATAR, you have to log on to your ATAR portal. Now there is a function that will allow for an email notification. And this notification will just tell you that your ATAR is now available in your account. So eligible students, you will be able to pr print your ATAR certificate once the ATARs have been released. We also have an appeals process. So if you believe that your ATAR has been calculated incorrectly, you're more than welcome to you know, lodge an appeals. Make sure that you do have a genuine reason for doing so and please don't use ATAR calculators as an indication. There's also a verification process. So maybe you're wanting to go internationally um, to study and they might require a certified version um, and you might need to request this um, through QTAC and they all sit on the policies page of our website. If you have any questions about ATAR, you can call the ATAR hotline or you can email us as well. And then again, for more details, you know, regarding subjects or the curriculum, they go directly to the QCAA. If you ever need any extra help, there are heaps of useful resources available on our website as well. We do have the year 12 guide and a range of fact sheets, you know, for those of you who are studying vet qualifications as well. 
um, you know, there's a great resource that links you to the institution's website as they all use them differently and individually as well. And we also have the QTAC passport. Now, though it says for year 12 students, um, for the mature age students in the audience, please still note down this QR code. It's super, super important and really helpful. So everything that you need to know about applying to QTAC um, for you know, admissions in 2024 can all be located via this QR code. So you can find things like key dates and fixed closing dates um, and course offer details super important information um, available to you via this QR code. So, you know, definitely take this down and also bypasses our website as well. So if there is, you know, a system error when everyone's trying to log on to view their accounts, you can actually bypass it by using this QR code as well. So application tips, apply early, check your key dates, and you can use a personal email address. The last thing you want to happen is, you know, it's ATAR release day or, you know, your offer's been released and you use the school email address and then you can't log in. You have to call QTAC and, you know, our phone lines are super busy during this time as well. Um, and it can take a couple of days for us to actually change your email address over. So make sure, you know, a couple of days before ATAR or your offers are coming out, you can log into your account. Make sure that you know your entry requirements, you know, any um, NMAC um, questionnaires, teacher questionnaire, portfolios, additional applications to the universities. Make sure you know what these are and when they're due. And you can also authorize someone that you would like um, to act on your behalf of your QTAC application. Now this person does have the authority to accept or reject any offers. So make sure it's someone like a parent or guardian who you really, really trust. And if you get stuck, please always ask QTAC. We're here to help and we wanna help you as well. Thanks so much, Lara. That's some, um, I guess, seriously overwhelming, but also really valuable information. Uh, so if you do have any questions, absolutely, for Lara, put those in the Q&A chat. Um, I've seen them coming in thick and fast, so thank you so much. We'll get to those shortly. And I guess for those that have been uh, listening on in the background, this has been recorded and it'll be sent out to you. Um, so you can go over those uh, important tips that, that Lara has sort of gone through and check out that passport and stuff like that at a later date, or just to refresh your memory. Um, maybe next Tuesday when QTAC does open. I guess before we do go into a q and I'm just going to run through a, a few JCU specific things that we think are really important to our year 12 students, but also to our maybe mature students in the audience. So to get that started, it's going to let's have a look at our year 12 student success package. So at JCU, um, we sort of really want to support students as they transition from high school to university. We want to start that process, um, I guess, now in year 12 with our early offer program. So the three programs that we've got now, Student Success Package, are our early offers, our guaranteed admission, and then our adjustment factors. So let's go through them. So early offer program, I guess, what is it? It's a little bit of an, um, I guess, an opportunity for you to receive a conditional offer to study um, at James Cook University whilst you're still at school. It allows you to take that pressure, I guess, off um, knowing that you've got a place at a university moving forward, um, and you can sort of plan around um, all the things that you need to for university whilst completing year 12. Now, I, I make special note to the little um, bubble in the top right hand corner. Um, we'll actually shout you your QTAC um, fee to apply if you uh, receive a JCU early offer. So absolutely uh, jump on our website, um, which is down in the bottom left, jcu.edu.au forward slash um, year 12 and apply for an early offer. So they have opened. Um, you've got a couple of more months before they do close, but it allows you, I guess, to offset that um, application fee. And I guess it allows you to sort of transition uh, into university with a little bit of ease. Our guaranteed admission. So how does this work? Now, before I explain it, I want to put a caveat over the next two slides. Not all of our courses are included in this. Uh, so maybe for those interested in medicine, dentistry, or veterinary science, uh, don't get too excited by this one. But for those that are looking at other courses, we do have a guaranteed admissions program. And that allows students who receive an ATAR of 19 above to 
be guaranteed entry into most of JCU courses uh, with the subjects that are prerequisites waived. So Lara mentioned uh, before that some subjects or some university courses require subject prerequisites. Here at JCU, we det will determine if you receive an ATAR higher than 90, we'll, we'll waiver those subjects for you. For those that receive an ATAR of 90, sorry, apologies, 73 and above, we'll guarantee admit you into those programs. However, we will require those subjects be met. And to apply, uh, it's just through QTAC, and then we'll do the rest. And then our adjustment factors. We've got two in this, um, I guess, category. One being the regional preference scheme, which depending on the location uh, you live in, uh, we will automatically award you as an applicant two bonus points towards your ATAR to an application here at JCU. And then our subject adjustment scheme. So looking at the six or, uh, subjects listed on the screen, for those that of you that do a higher level subject like math methods or languages or specialist maths, we'll actually award you two bonus points uh, for those subjects. Now, uh, everyone loves a little fine print. So down the bottom, it says you can only have a maximum of 10 per um, application. And not all courses will admit 10, uh, but you can, um, I guess, help out that way as well. Now, attending university is not always a straight pathway. Uh, some of us will attend directly by receiving an ATAR and having met those subject prerequisites. However, that's not always uh, the case. It might be you've decided in year 10 not to go to university and then over the year 11 and 12, uh, a future student advisor has attended your school from James Cook University and really inspired you to consider university or you've had a conversation with your career counsellor or uh, your mum or dad or a caregiver and, and they've really inspired the, the interest in university. And at that point in time, you realise you may not necessarily have met those subject prerequisites because remembering in, in year 10, university wasn't for you. This is where our pathways become available. So we've got two. Our certificate of higher education is a really good one. It allows you to meet the subject prerequisites for the degree that you're looking to go into. So if you don't do math methods or chemistry, you can do those over the summer and still seek admission uh, for next year. Then we've also got our Diploma of Higher Education, which allows students that sort of soft introduction to university. It's a 12-month short course. It allows you to sort of transition, test out a few subjects, prepare your literacy and numeracy, and then also get a taste as to what university is like before you sort of take that big next step into a bachelor's degree. JCU also does acknowledge um, VET and TAFE qualifications for certain courses. Uh, so if you've done a one of those either during school or, or outside of school, we can use that in some cases to admit entry into a bachelor's course. And then we have our packaged offers. So this is where we'll combine a pathway with your bachelor. So upon successful completion of your pathway program, so being the Diploma of Higher Education, we'll admit you into a bachelor's uh, in that particular field. So there's a range of different options. So there's not necessarily a one, -stop, a one size fits all. Uh, so sort of work with um, either us at the university or your careers counsellor at school to work out what best fits for you. And then work experience. We do appreciate that uh, some students uh, decide in year 10 not to go to university or, or those that have left school and, and gone into the workforce, they may actually decide that they want to come back to university as what we call a mature student. Now these people have, I guess, gone out and got a practical skill and now they want to sort of turn that into, um, I guess, a, a bachelor's qualification. You can actually, in certain cases, use uh, your sort of full-time paid employment to actually sort of transfer some of those, um, I guess, rather than academic skills, but applied skills. So having a look at that, that's also an option. So uh, work with us at the university sort of to really help transition uh, and, and use the skills that you've sort of developed over your working career. Now, it is really important, uh, and I appreciate there's a lot of dates here, but to understand the dates and the key points of this next six months, I guess, for those in year 12 and those that are looking at university uh, for next year. So I guess a little bit of history. Uh, our early offers opened in May. Uh, QTAC opens next week on the 1st of August. Um, our early offers will close on the 13th of October. Now, for those that are in year 12, I very much imagine there's a countdown onto the 17th of November where you finish school, congratulations. 
And then ATARs. Now, we've said the 15th of December, QTAC has said there's no date set, watch that space. Uh, but ATARs are released, middle of December. All your hard work has been worth it. Now, something uh, maybe as a future me would have loved to know, your ATAR is just a number. So that's okay, and be okay with that. Because as a university, we've got pathways available for you to in order to admit you into a course, even if your ATAR isn't always there. So work with us and we'll work with you. And then moving into January next year, university has started. So uh, for our trimesters, they'll start at the end of January and then our semesters will start in the middle of February. So now's an opportunity for us to answer some of your questions. So I'm gonna invite Lara back and I'm just gonna go quickly through the Q&A just to make sure that um, I guess I can answer the most uh, pressing ones first. Um, and hopefully we can answer all of the um, attendees questions tonight. So Lara, my first question to you from the audience is an applicant's coming from South Australia and they will, they, their question is, I'm an interstate student and will get an ATAR in South Australia. Will my ATAR be different when applying through to QTAC? So a really good question and also a really common one as well. So whatever the ATAR you receive in South Australia um, would be the same on your application and plus any adjustments you could be eligible for. Perfect, thank you. Now, the next question is, my daughter, or and I, I guess I'll remove the, I'll make this a general question. Um, someone's applying or wishes to apply to both VTAC and QTAC. Does that mean the maximum number of preferences is sort of six for both or are they combined? Okay, so because we are completely separate um, companies, so think of it as Coles to Woolworths, although we do the exact same thing, completely different. So you can have six with QTAC and then however many VTAC um, take as well. You can even receive an offer from QTAC and it won't interfere with VTAC and vice versa. We are completely separate companies. And just following on from that, are the D, and if you don't know this, then uh, I guess it's a little bit of homework for uh, those at home. Are the dates for offers for both QTAC and VTAC or other state tax around the same time? I honestly wouldn't know um, because they are completely different companies. Um, so they can be completely different. So definitely check directly with that, you know, tertiary admission centre interstate just for the most up for information because I honestly am not quite sure. <laughs> Perfect. And I guess, um, which is really good. Um, and I guess it's sort of um, some, I guess, good advice for, for those playing along at home that are looking at a, or receiving an, an offer from QTAC or ATAC next year, making sure that they're working with the, the respective institution that they're applying to, to make sure that they know exactly when QTAC dates are being released and or offers are being released and other tax if they're applying. So perfect. Absolutely. And there's one quick topic on that as well. Sorry to interject there. It's just that if you are enrolling into um, a course as well, and then you change your mind, and this happens a lot, you know, you might receive an offer from VTAC, and then you've actually got one from JCU, and you'd much rather have that. If you have enrolled, um, just make sure that you unenroll as well, because some institutions might require you to enroll to formally hold your place. Perfect. On that, I guess, time, how long can you conditionally how long, if you conditionally accept an offer, how long can you wait to before you respond? So conditionally responding um, is, you know, accepting essentially. So if you conditionally accept, you have accepted and, you know, that condition is on receiving another offer. However, it's super important that you always check your offer email that you receive. Some institutions, you know, um, might require that you can only conditionally except for a certain period or like I'll touching on before formally enrolling. So although the answer, I can't give a straight answer, I'm um, just because it can change from institution to institution. So take away from that, always check your offer email because um, that will give you all the information you know you need. Don't just read the top line, make sure you actually read everything because um, there is a lot of detail provided there as well. Perfect, good advice. Now, I've got two questions. Uh, they sort of, I'm going to say, come hand in hand to a degree. The first one is, um, how, are we, how do we find out the outcome of our EAS? 
And does an EIS make us less appealing to competitive courses um, at university? Okay, so we won't send you an email um, to let you know that you've been successful for EAS and you won't be able to see it on your account. You just need to call us. If something is wrong with the documents you've provided, QTAC will definitely let you know. I guess so no news is good news in this instance. Um, in that regard, EAS is only there to help you. So it can't negatively affect your application. Now, keeping in mind for your super competitive courses, you know, like something like dentistry um, or medicine and surgery, it's unlikely that institutions will accept adjustment anyways, um, but they definitely do not negatively impact your application when institutions, you know, and the systems are going in to release offers. All they see is that you're el eligible and what your merit ATAR would be. Perfect. I'm going to have to skip to the first question. I'll have to reread it whilst just answering the next question. <laughs> um, this, this question is coming. If I was given an offer for my number two preference by QTAC, then choose to conditionally accept, would I lose the first offer even if my higher preference just didn't receive an offer? Okay, so you would only lose an offer um, after conditionally responding if you actually received an offer elsewhere um, or if you miss an important point like enrolling with the institution to formally hold your place. Perfect, thank you. Now, earlier you mentioned, um, and you made it us all promise uh, that we <laughs> would only do it if we did it correctly, uh, you, you said, something about jeopardizing an offer. So the question is, what does it mean jeopardizing my offer when I conditionally accept the offer? If I conditionally accept the offer, does it mean there is a chance that the offer can be withdrawn from the university? So um, it can, just depending on the institution and what the enrollment advice is. So you might receive an offer and then there, you know, you can conditionally accept it, of course, that's perfectly fine, but the institution might require that you actually formally enroll to, you know, hold your place within that institution. So failing to do that, you know, would then potentially revoke your offer. Um, and also, if you do receive an offer elsewhere, then of course, you know, you can lose that offer as well, you would lose offer as well. I guess what, what I'm really stressing there um, is just make sure you're doing it because you actually want to receive an offer elsewhere. A lot of, you know, people get excited and they want to see how many offers they can receive. Um, and as well as that's well and good, it's just that you do always run that risk, that's all. So I think we just over harp on about that because, you know, it is heartbreaking for us too um, when that does happen to someone. Absolutely. And I guess particularly considering... Uh, those that are receiving ATARs have spent the last, quick math, 12 years, a long time um, at, at school, all to come down to uh, potentially not promising Lara on the uh, the 27th of July to, <laughs> to do it correctly. Um, so perfect. <laughs> now, my next question is regarding the IB. So to our understanding, IB comes out a lot later than the IB. Uh, sorry, then the ATAR scores. Uh, by doing the IB program, does that disadvantage students because that it comes out so much later? Um, no. Um, historically, we've always been able to get um, those results, you know, added onto the application in time before the selection's been made. I can't speak on behalf of this year, only because, you know, those key dates haven't been finalised just yet. But given that the IB has changed to the IBAS um, turnover now, all the tax, so all the tertiary admission centre have the same point and cross and getting that finalised. So you can be considered, you know, for the first round of offers in January. So definitely don't think like that. It should be perfectly fine. Perfect. Now I've just, so I saw a question and they've just been moving so quickly. Um, <laughs> and now it's, I can't, Locate it. Uh, so I'm just going to jump through to another question. Um, I guess when ATAR, uh, sorry, when offers uh, start being made, I guess in the main major offer rounds at the beginning of next year, how often are those offer rounds and what's the time difference between them? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, so usually we have 
one each week for the first two to three weeks. And then they become a bit more frequent as we go towards the end of January to mid-February. However, um, like always, every institution can be different in that sense. So some can, you know, opt in to do them daily as well. So the best advice I have for you is check the key dates. That will tell you when the um, scheduled offer rounds are. And if you're wondering about a, like a current course, just call QTAC because we can see a lot in the back system. Um, you know, the institution you're applying to might actually have a daily offer round as like tomorrow particularly. And then, but the website isn't advising to another week. Perfect. So reaching out to the respective institution that they're applying to, but also to QTAC for those particular details. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Now I'm going to sort of, I guess, maybe um, modify the question that's been asked. Um, they've asked if I finish a certificate three after submitting my application to QTAC, can they add it in later? I want to, um, I guess, add to that question. If a student does complete any certificates during school or, or they submit an application to QTAC for a particular program and then they realise they've missed some maybe crucial information, can they re or add that in um, afterwards? Absolutely. Um, so just give us a call and we can just add it into your account for you. And then you just email that through. Um, for the year 12s in the audience that are graduating this year, um, any VET qualifications are cert three and above, they should be in your QC learning account. So, and marked as complete. So that's super important. It has to be marked as complete because when you apply through QTAC and you use your Louis number, it should link all that information onto your account anyway. So even your VET qualification should be brought over. Perfect. The next question is regarding EIS. Can they only apply, I guess, once? So um, you can apply for all the categories in EAS, um, but your EAS application is only valid for that current admissions year. So if you were to apply the following um, year, you would need to resubmit all the documentation again, as well as the new cover sheets. And, you know, you might be applying interstate as well, um, and they have a similar um, scheme available we can't use their cover sheets with QTAC. We have to actually download the QTAC ones. So it can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you're applying to every single state, um, but yeah. <laughs> Perfect, wonderful. Uh, so that actually is sort of coming towards the end of our question. So for anyone that's still in the audience, if you have any burning questions that you'd love Lara from QTAC or uh, myself from the university to answer, absolutely put them in um, and we'll get try and get as many of those answered. I'm going to ask this one now. I'm not 100% sure how we'll go with it because to me, when I say they've accepted, it removes all others. However, we'll get the answer from QTAC. Yeah. If a student was to accept an offer from another university before their application, now it says before my application is finalised in JCU, will I get an offer from JCU? I'm going to say they're maybe applying for maybe one of our competitive programs and they haven't submitted the application. Um, would they still um, maybe be considered or is because they've accepted an offer with a previous institution? It's okay, like on the same QTAC application? Potentially. We'll go okay. with that one. We'll go with that one. Okay, cool. So maybe you're applying for you know, multiple institutions on your QTAC application um, and some institution um, preferences are finalised over others. What you need to do is if you were to receive an offer, but you still want JCU is just conditionally accept that offer and just make sure JCU is placed above. Perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. So I guess when it comes to conditionally accepting, you sort of really need to know what you'd really like to get into and hope that by conditionally accepting that offer will be made. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've stressed enough. Um, it needs to be that you really, really want it. It's because it's so heartbreaking for us, you know, when, when it does happen and we can't actually help them. Like our hearts, you know, break with yours. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, with, with changing of the preferences, the students have the opportunity to change their preferences for three, pardon me, three, three times. Do you advise students to maybe hold out changing their preferences until they've received their ATAR or, or is it free range from once they submit it? 
you can do it before, but you know, I really advise that you don't. Um, the reason being is because you only get those three that are free. It's a bit of a tongue twist to that one. Um, and then every one after that's about $50. Um, so you want to make sure that you have options available to you. So especially if, you know, you do change your mind, you know, even after the offer round, you might want to be considered for something else. You want to have as many up your sleeve, you know, to play around with. Perfect. And then I guess um, to have as many opportunities as we'd like, I think this leads really nicely into my next question. Can I only have three preferences or is it compulsory to have six? You can absolutely only have three. Um, you can have one if you really wanted to. But we don't advise that students do that only because, you know, the more preferences you have in there, the more pathway options you have, and also the more chances that you have to receive an offer. But you can just have the three if you wanted to. Perfect. Now, the question that I'm going to answer or ask next is actually not the question that was asked because I can see one of my colleagues in the background answering that one. But the question is how many years after I complete my ATAR, can I still use my ATAR to apply to universities? I think I get asked this question every single webinar and presentation. Um, your ATAR is always valid. You can, you know, take a 20 year gap year if you want and then come back and your ATAR will be sitting there waiting for you. I think where the um, misconception can come from is that some institutions, once one year full-time tertiary study has been done, they will only look at your GPA. But if you have no other study completed, um, just come back to us and you can use your ATAR. And most institutions are going to work on a highest application rank to lowest. Perfect. So obviously you knew that question was coming. Um, <laughs> so to the person that asked that question was actually referring to their um, applying to medicine. So um, I guess as you sort of answered, if they're applying to, I guess maybe not medicine, dentistry, veterinary science, for as long as uh, they shall choose. Uh, but if you're applying for one of those three programs, we'll be using, and you decide to go to university, we'll be using your um, grade point average from the course that you studied. So perfect. Thank you. Yes, now that wraps up pleasure. all of our questions. So thank you so much for everyone that put in those questions. Uh, thank you to my colleagues in the background that answered them uh, behind the scenes. And I think, yes, thanks so much to uh, Lara for putting those. Uh, we really appreciate that. So before we do finish, we do have uh, just a couple more slides with some information uh, with, re with regards to, I guess, some upcoming events that JCU has. So for those that are located, I guess, in Townsville, Mackay, uh, Cairns, or virtually, uh, we have career expos in your locations um, starting from next Monday through to uh, the middle of September. For those that are interested in sport, health, um, we've also, pardon me, sport or health, we are also arranging, uh, arranging um, events in those areas um, as well. Uh, so absolutely jump on our website, jcu.edu.au forward slash events and check out all of those because we'd love to, um, I guess, engage with you uh, and provide sort of that face-to-face -face information as well. Now, for those that um, are still interested in online webinars, we have a couple more coming up. So for those that um, want a little bit more information about the ATAR system because I appreciate for those that are maybe in year 10, it's a little bit overwhelming sort of thinking about all of those subjects and all of the QCE points that you have to obtain and, and those sorts of things in order to uh, receive an ATAR at the end of year 12. Uh, we're running an, an ATAR webinar on the 31st of August. For those that are in year 12 that are just not sure about how they're going to get into university or for those that are mature students that sort of want to work out what qualification that they've got, got or what pathway is available or what support that is on offer at universities. We're running a pathway webinar uh, in the middle of September. And then for those year 12 students that are almost uh, four weeks away from finishing school at the 12th of October, we're running a webinar dedicated to you guys to sort of hear from our current students about what it's like transitioning from high school to university or what university is really like or how do you choose what subjects you'd like to do or um, what, what supports on offer or what clubs and societies are available and all the things that you can do um, at university that maybe you can't at school, there's a webinar for you. So we'd love for you to um, attend one of those. 
Um, however, from all of us here at JCU, uh, that does draw tonight's webinar to a close. So thank you so much. We do really appreciate you joining us. As you do leave tonight's webinar, there will be a short survey. If you wouldn't mind completing that, uh, we'd really appreciate that. But from all of us here at JCU, right on eight o'clock. Good night.